Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks for clicking, thanks for your love, thanks for your likes, thanks for always being there. Yes, today in today's video, I'll be showing you something that I mean I was amazed when I also watched the video. You know, at times we say we are leaders, but I want us to pause and ask ourselves some questions. Can I really die for what I believe in? If you know you can die for what you believe in, at the end, thank me with this video. So stay tuned. See you on my next video. Bye-bye. Treat you with respect. You're in prison and you said, I will only respond to the name Mandela or Mr. Mandela. You must fight the battle for dignity mm -hmm. on the very first day you go to jail. Really? And uh, that's what we did. We put our foot down and insisted in being respected, even though we were prisoners. And we eventually succeeded in that. When I found some place in my country and a lady answered the telephone, I then asked, to whom am I speaking? She said, you're speaking to me. <laughs> I said, well, lady, I know I'm speaking to you. But what's your name? She said, who are you to ask for my name? What's your name? <laughs> I say, well, lady, as soon as you tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. But as we argued as to who should tell his or her name, she became very cross. And she said, you seem to be a backward person. <laughs> Have you passed your matric? <laughs> now matric in our country is a university entry examination. And I said, well, lady, you must be very careful. Because if the qualification to speak to you is the possession of a matric certificate, I might work hard and pass my matric and be in the same class as you are. That was treason. She said, you will never be in my class and bang the telephone. <laughs> How I wish she were here today. She would now discover that I have achieved more than pass my matric. I hated oppression. And when I think about the past, the type of things they did, I feel angry. You have a limited time to stay on earth. You must try and use that period for the purpose of transforming your country into what you desire it to be. What can assure me as a human being and a concerned African American that the ANC will indeed have a fiscal solvent policy that will continue the use of the resources of South Africa in a meaningful way? Or should I put it more succinctly, will your economy be based on the Marxist system, socialism, or capitalism, or both? I knew that, that that was the question you wanted to ask. <laughs> I am happy that you have had the courage to put it directly. <laughs> we are not concerned with models. We are not concerned with leaders. We are practical men and women whose solutions are dictated by the actual conditions existing in our country. As somebody has said, we do not care whether the cat is black or white as long as it can catch mice. The first thing is to be honest with yourself. 
you can never have an impact on society if you have not changed yourself. And one of the most important weapons in changing yourself is to recognize that peace, I mean, people everywhere in the world want peace. But humility is one of the most important qualities which you must have. Because if you are humble, if you make people realize that uh, you are no threat to them, then people will embrace you. They will listen to you. Was Muhammad Ali a hero of yours? Well, naturally, as far as boxing is concerned, and uh, what he has done, he was my hero. Just like Ruben here. This is my hero. What did you say to him when he told you he loved you? Well, I was uh, paralyzed because he made my day. And <laughs> <clears throat> so what leaders, what leaders of the 20th century do you admire? Well, I have answered that question. It's not a, the question of a leader. It's a question of a human being who does something to make an ordinary individual to feel I am a human being and uh, I have a future and uh, I can go to bed feeling strong and full of hope. And you have praised Fidel Castro as a leader of human rights and said that Cuba was one of the countries that's head and shoulders above all other countries in human rights, despite the fact that documents of the United Nations and elsewhere show that Cuba is one of the worst. I was just wondering, are these your models of leaders of human rights? And if so, would you want a Gaddafi or an Arafat or a Castro to be a future president of South Africa? One of the mistakes which some political analysts make is to think that their enemies should be our enemies. That we can and we will never do. We have our own struggle which we are conducting. We are grateful to the world for supporting our struggle. But nevertheless, we are an independent organization with its own policy. And the attitude of every country towards our attitude towards any country is determined by the attitude of that country to our struggle. Yasser <laughs> Arafat. Colonel Gaddafi, Fidel Castro, support our struggle to the hilt. There is no reason whatsoever why we should have any hesitation about hailing their commitment to human rights as they are being demanded in South Africa. Our attitude is based solely on the fact that they fully support the anti-apartheid struggle. They do not support it only in rhetoric. They are placing resources at our disposal for us to win the struggle.
That is the position. You, you, you also said to me uh, one evening, you said, we made the brain dominate the blood. Our emotion said, mm -hmm. the white minority is an enemy. We must never talk to them. But our brain said, if you don't talk to this man, your country will go up in flames. And for many years to come, this country would be engulfed in rivers of blood. So we had to reconcile that conflict. And uh, our talking to the enemy was the result of the domination of the brain over emotions. And then you were convicted in 1964 for um, a conspiracy against the state. And in your, when you pleaded, you said that I am willing to die for this cause. This is a very tough thing to say. Yes, <clears throat> I uh, had to say that, not from a spirit of bravado, but because I genuinely felt that uh, they were going to hang us. And uh, it is the desire of every freedom fighter <clears throat> to disappear under a cloud of glory rather than that of shame. It is the task of a freedom fighter when you see that uh, the end of your days has come to leave a tradition of uh, bravery, determination to face even death for your principles. And uh, I thought about it. It was not because I was brave, but because one had a duty to perform mm -hmm. at uh, that moment. I have dedicated my life to this struggle of the African people. I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society in which all persons will live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an idea for which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. For anybody who changes his principles depending on whom he is dealing, that is not a man who can lead a nation. Apparently, Mr. Copper, you have not listened to my argument. If you have done so, then you have not been serious in examining it. I have replied to one of our friends here that I have refused to be drawn into the differences that exist between various communities inside the USA. You have not commented that I am going to offend anybody by refusing to involve myself in the internal affairs of the USA. <clears throat> of the USA. <laughs> Why are you so keen that I should involve myself in the internal affairs of Cuba and Libya? No. I expect you to be consistent.
I don't know if I've paralyzed you. No, 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 no. I...